we have a special treat for you, and we hope you are hungry because Malou is with pit master Matt Horm himself, and they are cooking up a barbecue feast. Malou, how did you get them to your house? You got to tell us th your secrets. <laughs> Is this not the best day ever? You know how long we've been wanting to do this, right, Danny? Yeah. Yes, we are at my home here right now. Uh-huh. With Matt Horn, the pit master. Hi. Hi, how are you? Great to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, we've been wanting right. to, to meet you for such a long time. You are known for Horn Barbecue and you make the best barbecue oh, on the planet. Thank you, thank how did you get started? Well, you know what? I started back in 2016, uh, going to my grandmother's backyard, teaching myself the art and craft of barbecue. And um, that commitment of excellence of took me down a journey of doing farmers markets and pop-ups and here we are and look what you've done in Oakland for horn barbecue absolutely all right okay so what is the secret to making great barbecue I mean the key to making really great barbecue is is you know you want to first start off with really great ingredients um, right here you have your spare ribs the spare ribs will always come in and you get it from your you know your purveyor it'll come in like this what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a cut this meat off right here okay and what you're doing is that meat can be used for either rib tips mm -hmm. or there it is. Put my muscle into it, Matt. There you go. You got it. No, you're doing a great job. Doing a great job. All right. There you are. Okay. So once you have that there, uh, this cut right here is what you would call a St. Louis cut. Okay. So you want to grab a little bit of the mustard. Okay. We use the mustard as a bind at the restaurant, and pretty much what it does is it adheres, makes sure that the rub sticks to it really well. It's okay. perfect. All right. So just grab a little bit of the seasoning. Okay. So you want to season it really good. A lot? There you go. Yep, just like that. Okay. It's perfect. So let's flip this over. We're going to repeat the same process. What's in the seasoning, Matt? So we have a little bit of black pepper, uh, salt, onion powder, garlic powder, and a little bit of paprika. We keep it really simple. We want you to really taste the quality of the meat. Okay, what are you doing there now? So right here, I have a brisket. This is a whole packer cut of a brisket. Um, right before we put it on the smoker, we begin to cook it. Um, we trim it up. This is just to make sure that while it's on the smoker, that the smoke is traveling right over it. Okay. And throughout the long cooking process, you know, it's going to cook evenly. All right, so how'd you learn how to do all this? <laughs> you know what, it's just literally like, it's just commitment to excellence, but then also just a lot of, just a lot of practice. Making a brisket is not that easy, though, for someone to do at home. You know what? It's not, it's not easy. Brisket definitely is a commitment. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's one of those things. But, you know what? Throughout the long cooking process, you know, rather than focusing on where you arrive at, you got to embrace the whole cooking journey. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I like how you say that. Okay. Yeah. And then, so you cut all that. What do you do with all this? So pretty much what we do is we take this kind of harder fat and we use that to make tallow. And these other cuts we use for our sausage and we put in our beans. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, you smoke that, right? For how long Absolutely. do you smoke that for? So we smoke our briskets for 14 to 16 hours. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so people, we, people don't have a smoker to do that for and wait that long. Well, you know what? So here's the thing. So if you don't, if you don't have that, that long to wait, what you want to do is you want to get like, you just want to trim off a little bit more. You yeah. want to have like a smaller cut of a brisket. Right. And you can dial that cook time down so you don't have to wait as long. Okay. Well, it looks, well, thank you for making us not wait here. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So how do you do this? So you. Usually when we're trimming the brisket, I like to make this cut right here. Oh my gosh. This is the flat. This is more of your leaner cut of the brisket. This right here is your point. So once we make that trim there, we want to just come right here and we want to start cutting it up just like this. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. How do you know when it's actually done? I know, I know you're a field person, right? Well, you know what? That's the thing. That's one of the things about making really great barbecue is that you definitely want to go off of feel. Um, you'll definitely know when it's done, when, when you can put your hands underneath it and it kind of feels pillowy. Yeah, so you're an inspiration to a lot of people, you know, so, so what do you recommend for people to tell people if they you know, want to follow their dreams, reach their dreams? You know, if you want to follow your dreams, just trust, you know, just trust the vision that you've just been placed inside of you. I mean, like, I didn't understand like where we would go with the barbecue, but I had a vision to create excellence in everything that I do. And barbecue has been able to, you know, it's changed my life. It's been able to. You've changed our lives too. Oh, thank you it's so delicious. much. delicious. Thank you so much, thank Matt. All right. Woo. It's hard to talk at the same time when I'm eating. Danny, I'll save some for you. I'm telling you, this is the best barbecue on the planet, oh, thank Matt. You. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Woo. Yeah, I'm trusting my vision right now, and that looks delicious. <laughs> so, Matt, you will be seeing me soon, for sure. <laughs> Just right, to be thanks, seen her guys. Soon. <laughs> bon appetit. Thank you. Thanks,